Pray with me, please. Gracious God, as we remember today that we are dust, and to dust we will return, we pray that you would help us to stand on your word, to draw nourishment and strength from it for our souls, and speak to us in this time as we encounter your word, for Jesus' sake, amen. I'd like to show you a little video right now um, on the screen, but I'm gonna apologize ahead of time for its quality. It's a cell phone video, and so the resolution is quite pixelated. It's not very clear. But I want you to at least get the emotion of this moment, and I want you to see the, um, the way this event happens for a group of Chinese Christians. Um, for these people, uh, they meet secretly in places where they can be um, unharassed by the government. In the clip that you're about to see, suitcases have been brought in to the secret room where they are meeting. They've been smuggled there because they contain something really precious. It's the first time these dear brothers and sisters laid their hands on their very own Bible. In a sermon for the first Sunday in Lent, in 1534, Martin Luther said this, Before I starve for want of the word of God, I would rather do without bread and die of hunger. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. I can't. The little back button. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I think Martin Luther understood and recognized what that woman in the secret room in China realized. This is what we needed most. The word of God for our souls is even more important than food for our bodies. Our our present bodies are so temporary. We are dust and ashes but the soul that God feeds us with, his word, is a soul that's kept for eternal life based on how we've nurtured it with the word of God. When was the last time you were good and hangry? I use that phrase a lot, actually. Uh, It's that time, you know, when you're hungry and your hunger kind of turns into your emotions a little bit. Maybe you forgot to eat breakfast and got too busy to eat lunch and it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. I must confess that from time to time I get hangry and the growls in my stomach come out more in my mouth and the people around me know I'm hangry. Ever happened to you? 
When we starve ourselves of the word of God, sometimes you don't even realize the impact that it has on our body, our soul, our spirit. We become sinfully hangry. Starvation from the word of God causes us at times to lash out, to even lash out in hate and anger at other people. It makes us hungry for things of the world rather than things of the kingdom of God. It creates selfishness that hoards for ourselves and fails to help and provide for others. It's kind of interesting, I I saw that video of the Chinese Christians getting their Bible side by side with a video of Black Friday sales at Walmart. Very little difference with the eagerness to get to the stuff. But oh, the difference in the reverence and the love and the appreciation for the word of God. Spiritual starvation is far more serious an illness than the lack of food for our stomach. If we starve ourselves to spiritual death, it leads not just to physical death, but eternal death. When the children of Israel were wandering their way through the wilderness, they too got physically and spiritually hangry. They lashed out at Moses. They complained that there was no food to eat. They defied Moses and defied and denied God. And despite their protests and their self-inflicted problems, God provided the bread of life. He showered down miraculous manna in the wilderness and they ate and they were satisfied. More than that, they were filled with the word of God that forgave sin and their sinfulness. The hope and the expectation of their arrival in the promised land lay ahead only because God's unconditional love sustained them along the way. Today, we are embarking on a 40-day journey. It's not a 40-year wander in the wilderness or anything like that. Some of us have given up certain things like certain foods or Facebook or some other kind of convenience. I saw something that I'm pretty excited about, actually. I saw someone uh, share the idea of giving up a bag of stuff once a day just to unload the clutter and the extra stuff we have in our lives and give it to charity. I don't know what it is that you will deny yourself, but we dare not deny or starve ourselves from the bread of life, the word of God. These 40 days of Lent will remind us continually of the one who went into the wilderness fasted from food for 40 days, yet he feasted on the word of God and was able to use that word to combat Satan. That same one who said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Jesus, he perfectly hungered and thirsted for righteousness so that you and I would never go hungry for those things. We need forgiveness and righteousness and life, and that's what Jesus came to bring. He's the deliverer, he's the server. He's the one who showers down the miraculous manna of his perfect word, think about that. He serves us his own body and blood each time we come to his table, to Holy Communion. His meal is the one that fills us to the full with all that we need to be nourished and strong in the faith. So on Ash Wednesday, we are reminded that we are dust and we will return to dust. Life in this world is short, so we put our trust in the Savior, the bread of life to feed our souls so that we could live with confidence. 
people who have an undying hope. We do what St. Paul urged us to do in the epistle lesson for today. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly while we sing hymns and songs and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts to God. The devil didn't leave Jesus after the temptation in the wilderness. He pursued him all the way to the cross. And Jesus ultimately defeated him there. As he hung dead at Calvary, he defeated the devil and all the forces of evil for us. He won the forgiveness of sins. His body was broken. His blood was shed. And now, today, we, in our church, celebrate his presence with us in his broken body and his shed blood with the full confidence that the victory has been won. We're preparing for a feast, you and I. Scripture tells us that we will be welcomed to an eternal banquet. When we receive the Savior and his word, Scripture tells us that we taste and see that the Lord, he is good. We increasingly hunger for the blessings he delivers in his word. I just love that video. <laughs> I, I, it took me just a few seconds to get started on the sermon because it is so impactful. To think that Christians would get a hold of their own Bible for the first time. I've got dozens of Bibles. Maybe you have a few. But to think that they put their hands on the, on the Bible, they smelled the leather, they kissed it. You saw right after they got them, they were sitting there just pouring over it. <laughs> we can be like them if we realize this is what we needed the most. Amen? Amen? Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Teach us to stand upon your word, to stand upon the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ has come into the world to save us sinners. And though we are dust and ashes, we know that we shall rise again to be with you forever. Give us confidence and hope as we stand on your word for Jesus' sake. Amen.